Welcome to Alhack's virtual field visit on the village of Andor Man, a case of indirect population transfer. The de facto annexation of East Jerusalem and its associated regime of movement restrictions is having a devastating impact upon the fundamental human rights of the Palestinian population. The construction of the annexation wall, which began in 2002, further solidified Israel's policy of annexation of Palestinian territory. A situation was created in which illegal Israeli settlements built on occupied land are brought within the area west of the wall, while Palestinian communities in the area are subject to increasing restrictions aimed at encouraging or even forcing their relocation. Around Bethlehem, the annexation wall has been built in order to appropriate land from within the West Bank for the construction of settlements. The wall around Bethlehem annexes land for ten settlements known collectively as the Gush Etzion block. At the same time, the wall annexes land from the Bethlehem district, crippling the economy in the area and isolating Palestinian villages located to the west. Anor Man, a small village to the northwest of Bethlehem, has suffered greatly from being almost completely surrounded by a combination of the wall, the settlements and road 398. Anor Man consists of one street and approximately 25 houses. It is situated just within the Jerusalem municipal boundary, shown here by the orange line. In 1967, Israel illegally annexed East Jerusalem and surrounding areas, including the land of Anorman village. However, the inhabitants of the village were not recorded in the 1967 census of Jerusalem, and many were given West Bank IDs. Villages are considered by Israel to be illegally residing in Jerusalem simply by being in their homes. In 2002, Anorman's residents were informed that the village lay adjacent to the planned route of the wall and, with the settler bypass road passing through the village, they would have no access to Jerusalem or the West Bank. In 2006, a military checkpoint was established at the entrance to the village, allowing only Anor Man residents to pass through. They regularly faced delays and harassment. Palestinian visitors with West Bank IDs require special permits, which are very rarely granted. The residents of Anor Man are prohibited from building any new structures. There are no shops, schools or services in the village. Students must pass through the checkpoint to reach schools in the West Bank, and because no public transport is permitted to enter the village, students face lengthy travel delays. With no shops in Anoman, residents have no alternative but to bring supplies from elsewhere. Doctors are refused access into the village, and sick people must pass through the checkpoint to reach ambulances on the other side. Owners of newly built houses are unable to obtain licenses retroactively, and face steep fines and the demolition of their homes. Since no houses can be built or expanded, there is no room for family growth. Meanwhile, the nearby settlement of Harhoma, pictured here in the background, is expanding rapidly to house its 13,000 settlers. Harhoma covers 850 dunams, and Israel is planning to build an extension of 530 dunams of Anoman land. It will contain 12,000 more residential units. At the time of the creation of this video, there were no signposts to Anor Man. The only signs were for Mizmori, the Israeli name for the area. Residents of Anor Man report that on occasion, Israeli border police have refused entry to the village, saying there's no such thing as Anor Man. The stunting of Anor Man's natural growth, the gradual enforced transfer of residents, and the obstruction of any incoming residents can all be attributed to Israel's systematic campaign to ultimately rid the area of its Palestinian inhabitants. This is a clear example of a policy of indirect forcible transfer, which is a war crime under international humanitarian law. Should these policies be allowed to continue, the village will become a ghost town.